Hello everyone. Welcome to the fourth webinar of our webinar series on continuous updates. I am Ching and I have Shafana to the second half of the webinar with me here. We are from the installation experience team at WSO2. We focus mostly on installing WSO2 products on various platforms like Docker, Vagrant, AWS, Kubernetes, and delivering updates to the WSO2 product. Today, we are going to talk about running DevOps on WSO2 products for Amazon Web Services. Let's move on to the discussion points to see the content of today's webinar. First of all, let's see what is a CI CD pipeline and then why we need it and the key features of a CI CD pipeline. Also, the WSO2 AWS pipeline architecture followed by a demonstration and also we will explain the deployment infrastructure. First, I will give you an introduction about CI CD pipelines. CI stands for the continuous integration and CD is for continuous deployment. Continuous integration is the sim simply the process of integrating all the code to a shared repository. And then Continuous deployment is the process of automating the delivery of the integration code from the development to the deployment. These deployments would be your production or staging environments. Now let's see why we need a CI CD pipeline. <clears throat> a CI CD pipeline provides a single click deployment, which means that with a single code commit or a build, the pipeline will be triggered and there are no any other complex configurations required. Also, from starting from the developer's code changes until they are deployed in the production or staging environments, everything will be done automatically. This is an end-to-end -end automation. Also, since all the tasks are automated before deploying into environments, it is easy to push any bug fixes or deliver new features faster. So talking about the customer satisfaction, due to the automation and the fast update delivery mechanism in the pipeline, the customer satisfaction would be higher. <clears throat> also, the maintenance overhead is smaller since there is less human interaction in the pipeline. This would result in a less cost as well. Now let's see what are the key features of the WSO2 CI CD pipeline. Our pipeline can be used with a minimal set of configs with multiple parameters and only a few of them are only mandatory. It is also configured pre-configured pipeline with safe defaults enabled. We also support multiple environments such as staging, dev and production environments. Also, it provides a centralized login mechanism with Elk, which is Elasticsearch, Logstash, and Kibana. We also provide monitoring with Prometheus and a Grafana dashboard. Also, the DevOps is automated and the pipeline is driven by Gypped Ops. We have also embedded one for seamless updates. <clears throat> so we have embedded the latest update delivery mechanism, the in-place update tool to our WSO2 pipeline. Also, our pipeline is customizable to any user's requirements and it is very easy to customize according to your own use cases. Shafana will now explain the WSO2 AWS pipeline architecture. Thank you, Ching. This is the WSO2 AWS Pipeline Architecture Diagram. AWS Pipeline consists of seven main stages. Jenkins is used as a continuous integration tool and CloudFormation template is used as the continuous deployment. Jenkins runs the initial stages of the pipeline and the CloudFormation templates are used to deploy the WSO2 product in different environments. 
as you can see in the diagram jenkins has a set of stages the initial stage is the setting up of the environment setting up of the environment consists of cloning of some github repositories into the jenkins instance these repositories are the artifact source repository configuration repository and the cloud formation deployment repository artifact source repository is managed by developers this repository contains the artifacts related to the wso2 product and also the test suits configuration repository and the cloud formation repository are managed by devops engineers configuration repository contains the wso2 product configurations you may have your custom configurations as well cloud formation deployment repository contains the different cloud formation templates that are used to deploy the product in all the environments namely dev staging and production once the initial stage of the pipeline is completed the pipeline will progress into the second stage building the pack the second stage consists of building a fully configured wso2 product pack archive if you do have a valid wso2 subscription the, the product pack will contain WSO2 updates as well. In the third stage of the pipeline, the configured product pack archive is baked into a machine image. The created mesh Amazon machine image will be used to deploy the product in each of the dev, staging and production environments. Once the Amazon machine image is created deployment into the development environment will begin once the product is deployed into the development environment test suits that are specified in the artifact source repository will run on development environment if these test test suits are successfully passed pipeline will progress into a manual judgment phase upon users approval the pipeline will be pro will progress into the staging environment where the product will be deployed onto staging again once the deployment to staging is completed test will be run and once the tests are successfully run pipeline will again progress into a manual judgment phase so once the manual judgment is approved again the pipeline will progress into the production so this is the all seven stage main seven stages of the pipeline as you can see on the diagram all three environments are pre-configured with logging. The logging can be accessed using a Kibana dashboard. And in addition to logging, in the production environment, WSO2 pipeline has also monitoring. The monitoring capabilities are pre-configured using Prometheus and resources can be monitored using a grafana dashboard there will be four different dashboards for resource monitoring and i will show these dashboards in the demonstration let me start with the demonstration to start with the demonstration initially we need to have the <coughs> jenkins infrastructure to have the jenkins infrastructure there is a separate cloud formation template this cloud formation template can be found in this 
repository under the cloud formation folder for demonstration purposes i have uploaded this cloud formation template i have uploaded this cloud formation template on a s3 bucket i will be demonstrating how a wso2 identity server of two node deployment will be deployed using the pipeline as this template source i am going to give the s3 url and click on next this is the place where we have to give the stack details so these stack details are the pipeline parameters some of these are mandatory whereas some of these are optional the stack name could be any name so i will be giving as jenkins deployment and the parameters cluster configurations we need to give the aws access key and aws access secret key i will configure with my credentials and a private key will be used to ssh into the instances at a later stage create i will use a already created private key the instance type is default is medium but you may select among one of these to change the instance type this is the instance type the wso2 product will be deployed a valid ssh certificate is necessary for the https calls this is again another mandatory parameter i have already uploaded a valid ssl certificate so i will be using it and the database configurations are also mandatory the username and the password will be used to create the rds instance in each environment at a later stage this username and the password can be used to log into the rds instance default database type is mysql and it is pre selected wso2 subscription credentials this is an optional parameter if you do have a wso valid wso2 subscription then you may provide your username and the password if you have valid wso2 subscription you are subscribed for wso2 updates and a fully configured updated product pack will be in your production environment github credentials are again optional if you do want to configure github for your github artifact repository then you may give these credentials but there is the prerequisite before doing this you have to fork the sample github artifact repository i will show you how this can be done this is the sample github repository provided by for wso2 pipeline you may fork this since i have already forked it uh, i will open the repository you can find these repository links uh, in the resources slide of the slide deck since i have already forked the artifact source repository i can give those wso2 cred github credentials in here so i will be giving my username my github username and then my github password and the repository name to which i need to configure the hook i am doing a wso2 identity server to not deployment 
Thus, the product name and the product deployment pattern are pre-configured. And these are the three artifact GitHub repositories. So again, the artifact repository is my <coughs> cloned source artifact repository. And the cloud formation scripts is the WSO2 provided AWS cloud formation templates. It is in AWS CI CD deployment script. You may find these repository links in the resources slide. Configuration repository is the configurations that contains for the specific WSO2 product. So this is the GitHub repository that contains the identity server configurations. Jenkins console login password. This is the password that will be used to log into the Jenkins. At default username is admin, but the password is whatever is specified here. Again, the email is again a optional parameter. If you do want to receive notification on the pipeline and any failures, you may give a valid email address. So I will be given my email address. Click on next. And stack options can be configured, rollback uh, configurations can be configured. I'm going to skip it and click on next. Review the stack parameters and the template can be reviewed. When once all are done, create the stack. To create the Jenkins deployment, it will take around 10 minutes and this deployment will bring up a Jenkins instance. Due to limited time constraints, I have already created this in another region. So once the Jenkins deployment is completed, the stack will change into create complete status. If you click on the outputs tab, you can see the Jenkins console URL. Click open the URL to log into the Jenkins console. Once logged in, you can see that the product uh, pipeline job is pre-configured. Click on the pipeline job. The job is not yet run. The initial run need to be triggered manually. This will clone all the necessary repositories and set up all the environments. Click on run and there are two job parameters, the deployed product and the version. This is WSO2 identity server 5.580 uh, deployment. And click OK. Job will be started. You will be able to see the console log. The job has started to set up the environment by cloning the repositories. And once the initial stage is once the initial stage is done, it will progress into the second stage of building the pack. When the pipeline progresses in a similar fashion, at a time, you will be redirected to a manual approval stage. So that this is the stage. So you will be asked whether you want to proceed to deploy into staging. So this stage will be there once the deploy to development is completed. Here you can see the logs there. And the test runs are successful on development environment, and then you will be asked to proceed to deploy in staging. If you do wish to proceed to deploy in staging, click on approve and okay. Then you will 
in the pipeline will start the development of the staging. Similar, in a similar fashion, once the development of deploying the staging is completed and the test runs are successful, again, a man, a, another manual judgment phase will be there asking the user input whether we need to approve the deployment into production. So depending on the user's approval, product deployment will be promoted into staging and production environments. So I will also show you once the development stack is created, what are the resources created? So you can go to the AWS console and click on the development stack and click on the resources tab. You will be able to see all the set of resources that are created. A database instance is created, a Bastion instance is created, and load balancers, logging instances, and auto-scaling groups are created. Ching will explain you the product deployment architecture and the resources created on AWS. Thank you, Shafana. So I will now explain the deployment infrastructure architecture. So as you can see in this diagram, we will be creating a virtual private cloud in your AWS account using the cloud formation template provided. So in this virtual private cloud, we will be creating four subnets. So according to the diagram, you can see that we have created two public subnets and two private subnets. So each of these subnets will be deployed in two different availability zones. So now let's in focus into a public subnet. So in the public subnet, you can see that we have created a logmaster instance. In this logmaster instance, we will be starting an elastic search server and a logstash server. So this will be useful when to publish the logs which are provided by WSO2. Also, we are have creating a bastion instance. So this bastion instance is used to SSH into or access into the instances which are in the private subnet, which means our WSO2 products. So basically, the Bastion instance would work as a jump box. Also, in the public subnet, we will be creating a monitor master instance. This is basically an instance which has Prometheus and a Grafana dashboard to view the monitoring. <coughs> um, view the monitoring data in the instances. Also, we will be providing a net gateway where, which will allow the private instances which are in the private subnet to access the internet. So while focusing into the private subnet, you can see that there are two product instances in each of the private instances. So these will be basically our WSO2 product instances. So we are also using an elastic file system which is also known as an EFS, which is used to synchronize the artifacts within the two product instances. Also, we will be creating an RDS instance and pointing it to both of our product instances. So this RDS instance is configurable in the CloudFormation template according to your preference, which could be either MySQL database or Oracle or Postgres database. So now Shafana will demonstrate how a rolling update would work when a new commit to a JIT is occurred. Over to you, Shafana. Thank you, Ching. See, as I showed you earlier, when I created the Jenkins deployment, I also gave my GitHub credentials to configure the Git hook to my repository. So if I go into my repository settings and check the GitHub webhook, I will have the GitHub webhook for my Jenkins environment. So I will do a small code change by updating my readme file and show you how the Gen uh, Gen pipeline job will catch this push event and trigger the job.
So changes has been committed. And let's see. As you can see, the pipeline has triggered the pipeline has been triggered, which is started by a GitHub push. And it will start again with the pipeline stages with all the stages by building a new Amazon machine image and with the new code changes and deploy that Amazon machine image into the development, staging and the production. So all these environments will be updated. Once this update is completed, the final output would be like this. You will be able to see the updated development stack updated staging stack and the updated production stack. So that is how the pipeline will be driven by GitHub push. Apart from this, I would like to also show you all the uh, dev logging that is in development, staging and the production environments and also the monitoring dashboard. You can click on each of these stack and if you click on the output step, you will be able to see the console URL, management console URL of the WSO2 product and the gateway URLs and the logging, the log dashboard URL, which will be a Kibana dashboard URL. So for each of these step in the output step, you will be able to get the rest relative uh, management console URL. So click on the dev step outputs and click on the log dashboard URL. You will be redirected into a Kibana dashboard. When you click on the console URL, you will be redirected into the management console. You can log in using the default username and password. So this is the Kibana dashboard. You can see the logs. You have options to filter out the logs for each instances, and you can see the WSO2 carbon log in this. Apart from this, in the production stack, you can also see the monitoring dashboard. That is a Grafana dashboard. Click open the link you will be redirected to a Grafana dashboard and you will be prompted for logging. The default username and the password is admin admin. But once you logged in, you will be asked to change the password. You can give one of your own new password. So I'm going to skip that step and move on to the dashboards. So there are four dashboards. This is the probe There are four dashboards. This is the probe monitoring dashboard. This shows the instance health of both the instances that they are up and running. This will make a login call to each of the instances in a frequently timely manner. The other dashboards are, you have the resource monitoring. The resource monitoring contains all the necessary statistics of each of the instances, for example, the CPU usage, the memory usage, and everything. So each node can be filtered out here. We have we are doing a we have deployed a two-node deployment. So each node can be selected and can results can be viewed. And we also have JMX monitoring which monitors the Java CPU usage and the memory heap. Also the JVM monitoring. These monitoring dashboards are for two nodes. So you can selectively select between the nodes and select uh, with the statistics. I hope uh, the demonstration and the demo uh, pipeline instructions and the architecture were clear. 
So it's up to you now to ask questions. Okay, so we have a question whether is it possible to have any other environments other than staging and production? Yes, it is possible. Uh, in the cloud formation template repository, we have also given in the cloud formation template repository, there is also a sample cloud formation template. So if you do want to add another stage, another environment, it is simply a matter of copy the cloud formation template, sample cloud formation template, and add it as a, another environment in respective product. And apart from this, you can go into the AWS pipeline repository, which has all the Jenkins files and this is the Jenkins file that drives the pipeline. And you can add a new stage into this part. I hope that answers the question. Before doing any of this, you may have to fork these repositories. Okay, there is a question asking for the link for the GitHub repositories. You may, you will find these GitHub repositories in the resources tab. You can find it here in the slide deck. Uh, there is also another question asking whether is it possible to deploy the pipeline in different regions? Yes, it is possible. Pipeline is supporting, supported in uh, many of the, the AWS regions, so you may deploy it. Uh, there is also a question asking where, whether there will be any downtime during that day. Any downtime during the update? Uh, there will be no time, downtime. I will I will show you how why it is. If you see the cloud formation update. I will click on one environment and I will show you the event. There a rolling update is taking place. So what happens is it will rolling update will be initiated and it will terminate the instance and bring up another instance. But in each of these time, there will always be one instance up and running. So there will be no downtime. Uh, there is also a question again, how does uh, having a git hook to the artifacts will work with the manual stage of the uh, pipeline? Hmm. So even if uh, jo even if the job is triggered from GitHub, a git hook, again, when the changes need to be deployed into the staging or the production environment, the manual stage will be there. So there will be a user interaction at that point where the user has to promote the deployment into either staging or production. During an update, RDS, uh, there is also a question asking where, what happens to the RDS during the update? During the mm, update, uh, there are uh, RDS instances not updated. So again, I will show you how the update uh, resources are taking place. So if you, if you can see, these are the resources that are updated. The Bastion instance will be updated and the launch configurations and the auto scrolling groups will be updated. So there will be no change done to the RDS instance, but the instances with the product pack deployment will be updated. Also, there, uh, there's another question. Can there be Docker images instead of AMIs created? So actually our next webinar series on this so we will be using Docker images instead of AMIs for the CI/CD pipeline. So this will be uh, next week schedule. Uh, so please join in to that webinar, whoever is interested in uh, learning how to use a CI/CD pipeline with Docker images. So as a recap, uh, so just to recap on everything what you have been going through in the webinar, let me give you a quick recap. 
So starting point, uh, we went through what is a CI/CD pipeline and why you need it, also the architecture and everything. And let me highlight the main features of a WSO2 CI/CD pipeline. So as I mentioned, we, this has all uh, with a minimal set of configurations which are required and we support logging with Elk, monitoring with Prometheus, and this is driven by GitOps. Also, it is embedded with WSO2 updates with the in-place update tool, which is our latest update delivery mechanism in the WSO2 update history. And also, this pipeline is easily customizable to match your own customization. So if you go through like uh, these ones, the pipeline architecture, so everything is customizable. We are, it is just a plug and run. Uh, there are no complex configurations, anything. Everything is just as simple as that. And just mentioning about the deployment infrastructure, we mentioned about requiring different uh, couple of, uh, I mean, parameters like this SSL certificates and those stuff. So these are all configurable according to what you need. So this is uh, just as uh, just simple as that. So everything is customizable and you can uh, easily deploy this and if you have any issues you can create them in our JIT hub account so hope you enjoyed our webinar and so hope you enjoyed our webinar and we uh, so these are also the resources that are uh, that we use for our presentation webinar and also hope you will join our next webinar which is a ci cd pipeline in kubernetes so Akif and Tilna will be doing this webinar, uh, so stay tuned. Thank you, everyone.